let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to God. For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to this Tuesday morning Mass as we continue and end our novena for Mother's Day today. St. Veronica Roman Catholic Church is praying for the souls in purgatory. Celestine and Elizabeth Tato are praying in thanksgiving for many blessings received and for God's protection on their family. This week I received many messages about friends and family who are sick, some hospitalized, some bedridden at home, and some whose children have unruly behaviors. I'm going to have a general intention for all those friends and family who are having problems. We acknowledge our sins now as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to hear the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant Almighty and merciful God that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd in Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas, and the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and secured their feet to a snake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook. All the doors flew open and the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, we are all here. He asked for light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds, and he and all his family were baptized at once. He brought them up into his house and provided a meal, and with his household rejoiced as having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. Responsorial Psalm, your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your, your right, right hand saves me, me, O God. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Your, your right, right hand, hand saves, saves me, me, O Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, 
you have made great above all things, your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Your right your hand, hand saves, saves me, me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your, your right, right hand, hand saves me, me O Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I will send to you the Spirit of Truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me, and not one of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and the condemnation Sin because they do not believe in me. Righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. Condemnation because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, our reading, first reading presents an idea of the reality of the ascension of Jesus. On Easter Sunday, we heard that Jesus asked Mary not to cling to him because he had not yet gone to the Father. Today, Jesus realizes that because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. But he adds, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And so Jesus has ascended to the Father. And he will always be with us because the Spirit is with us. The Holy Spirit will enlighten the disciples on the reality of the world. A world that condemned the Savior of the world to death. A world that is living in sin. A world like our own that is turning its back to God and that needs to be cleansed and sanctified once more. Sin is that refusal to accept Jesus as the Son of God, sent to save the world, the sinful world, our own Lord and Savior. What we are living through these days, the result of the wickedness of human development and the result of not putting God at the center of things, needs to be cleansed by the Spirit. And this is going to be part of our intention when we begin the Novena for Pentecost next Friday, May the 22nd. Let me do a connection between what we read yesterday and why Paul had to be condemned by the magistrate after the stoning, the beating, 
by the crowd in the first reading. After going through his, his voyage to Philippi, baptizing Lydia and going to live with her, Paul and Silas always went to the marketplace to preach and to trade. Paul, a tent maker, could easily find business clients and partners wherever he went. And so he became a familiar figure. One morning as they were moving along, a little girl followed them, prophesying about the things they had brought to Philippi, urging all to listen to them. She was so irritating that Paul turned and rebuked the spirit that was in her and delivered the girl. She was a slave girl whose masters always used her for soothsaying and obtained money from the results of her predictions. Because of Paul's deliverance, she could no longer soothsay. So the source of the income of her masters had dried up. They were irritated. That explains why they and their clients brought the uproar and accused Paul and Silas as people bringing trouble to Philippi. They were judged and imprisoned. The spirit used this imprisonment, this prison term, to convert the Gola and his family. But Paul had another trick. He had obtained Roman citizenship and Romans were not to be subject to such torture and jail. So between what we read today and what we are going to read tomorrow, Paul is going to question whether Roman citizens are allowed to be tortured and dragged to prison with no judgment. And when the prison authorities will hear that he is a Roman citizen, they will go and tell the administrators that you are committing a big crime because that man you put in prison the other day is a Roman citizen. The administrator will come to beg Paul to leave. But Paul doesn't want to leave prison like that. Because if he leaves prison without a bull of liberation, those who try to lynch him the other day will still catch him along the way and lynch him. So the people, the administrator come and they escort Paul from the prison out of the city back to the seashore and then his voyage through Derbe and Thessaloniki will begin. Tomorrow we will see him already in Athens. It was a kind of roller coaster of experience for these two disciples of Jesus, these missionaries of Macedonia. We never know what God has in store for us in our journey through this earth under the direction and under the light of the Holy Spirit. We just need to be open to the Holy Spirit because he will put words in our mouths that we can use for the Lord. Like Paul and Barnabas, Christians today are at a loss to know just where God is leading our church to. Situations of crisis are not only a test of our character but can lead to renewing, to trust and new faith in the Lord. I have spoken to and exchanged with many Christians I have never met just because of this new dimension of our ministry online. The love of Jesus is no less able now than then to bring things to a good outcome. Even from a threatening vortex like a viral pandemic, somewhat wild changes may emerge. And in all manner, things are going to be well again with us. In the present crisis, we need to just seek divine guidance. To see others as God sees them. To judge as Jesus judges. And it is in the Holy Spirit who gives us God's perspective that we can have this light. So let's see as God sees 
in the spirit. Be wise as God is wise in the spirit. And continue to call on the Holy Spirit to fill the hearts of the faithful. Come, O Holy Spirit, and let the fire of your love burn in our hearts. Make us desire only what is pure, lovely, and holy, and good, in accord with the will of God, and give us the courage we need to put away all that is not pleasing in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands that it become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and this wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for it is through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, let it become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts, Lord washed away my iniquities and cleansed me from all my sins. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifices at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, hosts heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in, in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Charles Borromeo, St. John Paul II, St. Teresa of Calcutta, Pope St. Paul VI, St. Oscar Romero, St. Francesco and Jacinta, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. And we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, let's dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Do not look on our sins, O Lord, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Peace be with you. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
us in this deep purity of heart. May they bring me healing and strength now and forever. Amen. The Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.